Right. So we're recording away there and hopefully then, yeah, it just benefits people. I think that's the big one. So yeah, there we go. Perfecto. Yeah. All right. And again, the piece with the recording, I would say to a lot of people is if you're not talking and if you're not on the screen, you know, probably people feel quite comfortable with that as well. So that might give you some confidence. OK, let's create a notebook. How do we do that? Well, I'm just simply press add notebook if I want to, and then I can just simply log in here so I can choose my account that I want to create the notebook under. So maybe I say that the notebook is going to be Matt's lovely <laughs> Matt's lovely notes or something like that. Lovely Matt's notes. And hit create. So very simply, then in OneNote, it creates me a lovely uh, a OneNote notebook, uh, a section or a space where I can, you know, uh, doodle or learn or prepare for classes. So it's got all this kind of nice functionality. One of the bigger things when this uh, stops creating here, I think it takes up to a minute sometimes, is going to be the structure of the OneNote. Now I'm going to draw, I suppose, on that now while I'm waiting. Uh, the structure is as follows. Yeah, perfect. The structure is as follows. We got sections here and we got pages here. So they're the big things here. So yeah, it's done perfect. Right, so we got sections and we got pages. Now let's just stay with the idea here. I'm actually not even going to wait for that because I'm I'm um, impatient. Yeah, we've got sections and pages in my Matt's lovely notes. By default, you've got a new section here and a new page. And if I want at any stage, I can just rename that. Uh, maybe you want to say that that's algebra. And then you can rename that to be lesson one. Now, always I say you can. There's no specific right or wrong way to do things. I just suggest the thing that, uh, you know, the ways that I've done it are the things that work for me. So what I would normally do is this. Now, I guess today I'm showing you one note, which in essence is uh, similar, but a little bit different to what you've probably heard about, which is called class notebook, or which I often try and make sure to say, it, which is one note class notebook. When I hear or when I think about OneNote class notebook, I think about, oh, it's all that greatness and goodness of OneNote, but it's shared with my class and it's got some cool features like the content library, the collaboration space and the individual student sections and the ability to correct work from students and e-portfolios and all this goodness. And it's built into Teams as well. But for the moment, aside from that amazing tool, we're just talking about OneNote here, which currently is just my OneNote. So, it's just my one note. It's not shared with anyone. So we're going to stick to that. So if you can think about this one note as it's just my place right now to do some work, to plan for an activity. I'll give you an example. We're planning on doing some gardening like everyone, I suppose, in, in the world possibly right now. So we created a little um, uh, gardening notebook. And in that, we're going to put down some projects and some pictures and stuff. So I'm going to show you all the good things. So adding sections, simple. <laughs> adding pages, simple. Uh, what my kind of flow uh, as a teacher would have been the following. I would have created sections for the units of learning or the topics. So algebra, maybe you want to put one for geometry, maybe you want to put one for measure, that kind of an idea. And then if this is the non-shared uh, OneNote version, I can use this just for my planning. Or in another episode, you might look at uh, the teacher only section in the class notebook. So there's lots of goodness coming down the road. So it's easy to do pages and all that good stuff. Right now, how do you jump back to existing OneNotes that you have, the notebooks? Well, you can just do this. We're going to jump into my Cara notebook. So this is my test account. I love using it. Uh, it's got some cool stuff in it. Now, I've, uh, I suppose there a bit about me. We'll get over that. Right, one of the big things for sure, I think, is actually what you see here. So I want to show you, and this keeps me honest, by the way. So it's not a traditional presentation, I don't think. I'm going to show you OneNote from within OneNote. And then I'm going to try and keep myself honest to show you some of the features. I won't get to show you all of them for sure by doing this to do list here. Now, the first thing I want to show you is tags. So how do you how do you do them? What do you, what do you do? So if you were to see, oh, well, first of all, what is that? That's a nice little tick box. So I like that. That keeps me honest to show you some of the good stuff. So how, how does it work? Well, if you click anywhere empty and it's blinking away and you go to the home button here, so we got the home tab and we got this little guy over here, tag this note. So what I could do very simply is I could say, take out the garbage or the trash or whatever you want to say, rubbish as we say in Ireland. And then I could tick this and I could say, you know what, that's a to-do, a to-do for later. Also, I could say, let me see, ring, um, ring mom. That mightn't be so much of a to-do, but it might be something that's really important. So I can tag that there. 
Another thing I might want to do then as well, actually, is this. I might want to create my own tag. Definitions is great for students or remember for later or questions. Maybe you're planning. You can create a new tag and bring in its own name, give it its own icon, all of that good stuff. So, and then I suppose for me today, it's more or less kind of an overview of some of the cool stuff. Not going too deep into really anything, I guess, and trying to keep it fun. And then at the end, as I always say in my sessions, don't feel like you've got to be an expert on everything I'm showing you right now. So don't even stress it. I've got you covered at the very end with some cool resources, all of that good stuff there um, that will bring you through at your own time. There's a really great thing called the Microsoft Educator Center, and it shows you and brings you through all of these little things and how to do these small things that I'm doing. So sit back and enjoy the show. It's a bit like a, a, bit like a movie. Now, one of the things that's really nice as well is I can press this little magnifying glass or I can actually press Control and F. If I press Control and F, I can actually search specific tags. So search the to-do. So you see here, to-do. Or if I want to, I can search, uh, what was the other one? Um, do whatever I want. Search to-do or search the important tags, ring mom. So that's really cool. So you can see the different things and you go for the current page, current section, current notebook, or actually, which is pretty cool, you can search for tags across different notebooks, which is, uh, I think, pretty awesome. So you know what? I think to myself, that's not a bad job. I'd say I'm going to give myself a little tick on the to-do on tags. The next one, which is ooh, one of my favorites, uh, I have the blur background on, all right, with the different background, but one of my favorite things is to ink, and I definitely am a person who thinks with ink. So to show you inking, I'm just going to simply get my uh, stylus. If I want, I can go to the draw tab beforehand, and I can choose like a certain pen. These cool pens, Rainbow, Galaxy, Mike Tolson told me the proper name for that one. I didn't know it was called Galaxy, but it is now. Rainbow Ink, so watch this, everything is better with Rainbow Ink. And the other big thing as well, by the way, the one thing I love and what I would have, yeah, the one thing I love and what I love in the class as well is this, pinching to zoom to draw people's attention to things. Like, I'll tell you this much, could you imagine? Because like, I suppose my subjects, I'm a math teacher, business and computers. But could you imagine if you now as the person in the audience or in my class saw that, you know, something that looked even just like that, you'd like, oh, that doesn't look so good. But if I put it in and I, I made it larger, or even if I actually changed that into some rainbow ink, watch what would happen there. So I'm going to get my rainbow ink on here. And I'm going to go, this is massive, X plus two is four. We're definitely going to do some math today. So don't uh, don't be surprised if we end up doing it. Hello there, Gloria and Adam, and we got Lauren as well. So yeah, how about that? So inking, that's an awesome thing. So putting the pen to the screen, choosing my different colors, giving tick boxes. By the way, what do you do here? Now, you either raise the pen to it or you can bring your mouse to it. I know people who kind of are pen and mouse interchangeably, and that's cool. So you can bring it in here. You can choose the different uh, widths of your pen. So here, how big is the pen going to look? What color is it going to be? Just like that, that's awesome. You can go more colors as well, and you can choose the different colors. Now, I, I'm never so organized, but uh, because I do so many kind of things like this in different uh, environments, but if you really wanted to, you could actually have a f your favorite selection of tools up here. So I don't know if you noticed, but with the Surface Stylus, I'm just going to put the pen to the uh, screen, essentially, the eraser, and watch this. Bye bye. See you later. I can also do it a lot of different ways. I can choose the eraser here as well. So I can just click on it with my pen here and I can just erase away there. The not so nice math as well. If I want to, I can get a highlighter going so I can just choose my highlighter and highlight some stuff. Or you might say, oh, that's not big enough. Get a massive highlighter in there. So highlight like that. So I think that's pretty cool. So I'm just touching on the screen in front of me. If you're wondering where I'm going, what am I doing? I'm coming to the screen like that, just like that. Um, in no set order, I have a tick list. I'll probably tick after we go, but do you see this cool ruler? That's definitely one that I love. So I'm going to get that ruler. And then now what am I doing is uh, kind of like uh, some space age stuff. I'm actually getting my two fingers and I'm moving the ruler like that. So I think that's cool. And then I'm getting my pen and I am actually drawing, would you believe, on the ruler and it's locking to that. And as a math teacher, this excites me, I'll be honest with you. I'm quite excited at any moment to be able to pull up a 45 degree angle and do that. I don't know if there's any other maths teachers in here. Actually, in the conversation, is there who's a maths teacher in here in the conversation? 
That'd be cool. Or who teaches maths or who loves maths? I teach like maths. Tell me. It's Alice. I teach math. Oh, awesome, Alice. Good. Okay, brilliant. Good stuff. Oh, brilliant, Alice. Um, yeah, so to be honest with you, my love for maths is not a it's not a secret. Yeah, good stuff. Oh, 34 years back. Oh, wow. That's massive. Yeah, the math is so much fun and especially math in OneNote. Like, I'll be honest with you, I'll make make no secret of it. My favorite subject to teach is math, definitely. So, and I just love this kind of stuff. I'm going to stay in a math team, a math kind of a theme for a moment, right? So I'm doing my inking, I'm writing my uh, math problems. I'm going to show you something cool there. And then you know what I'll do? I'll go backwards and I'll tick off the stuff that I've shown you and keep myself on or keep myself honest here. So here we go. Right. So I'm going to go for mm, go for one of these guys. X squared plus mm, 4x. Gee, the pressure is on sometimes. You're like, oh my God. Plus 3. Now, x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now, for someone who's not a math or not a math teacher, or someone who maybe doesn't love maths as much as maybe I do, or Alice does, or some of the other cool people in this um, room here, if you were to highlight this and press maths, oh wow, what's going on here? So actually, one of the things I can do is uh, ink to math. So I think that's pretty neat. So for you then, as a teacher, you can just call that math problem up, no problem. So you can have it typed because some students really like that. The other thing you can do though, it doesn't stop there. You can evaluate, you can factor, you can graph, you can differentiate, and you can integrate. You can do all the amazing things that you want to do. So if you were to factor, look at this stuff. There's your factors. Solution steps. There's your solution steps. Quadratic formula. We call it the minus B or the quadratic formula. I love that stuff. Hey, David, how are you? <laughs> Good, nice to see you. Yeah, and lots of people are joining. This is brilliant. Uh, yeah, perfect. And there'll be a lot of maths here. So here we go. One of the things that you can do as well is you can drag the steps or press enter or space to insert on the page. So you can do lots of stuff. So uh, I can just, I like dragging the steps out to be honest with you. But as I said there, you got lots of different options. So for a teacher, this is pretty good. It's pretty useful. And I'm gonna tell you one thing. Whenever I say for a teacher, I want you just to start to think for a student, what could they do? Because the whole big thing here is to not necessarily make it about what the teacher can do with the tools, what can the students do as well and what can they create? So you get the steps here and then for me, it would be handy if I wanted to maybe just hone in on a certain part of the formula. If I wanted to maybe talk about, you know, common mistakes here around the whole plus or minus thing, maybe some people are thinking they could do both, either, whatever, all that good stuff. So lots of stuff you can do. There is another button here, which is pretty amazing. And it's called Immersive Reader, right? Now, I suppose I could allude to the Immersive Reader here, I could even press it, but I'm not going to do it right now. So I'm going to keep you in suspense and I won't even tell you what Immersive Reader is right now. So hold on, you're going to you're going to really want to see this, but just take a note. It's here. You can do solution steps factor, all of that good stuff. So lots of really cool things. Now you might say, is there more? I suppose one of the big ones for me, I would have liked the graphing for sure. So I love that graph in 2D. It's really cool. And then if you were to zoom in, and then you just drag it up. You can even zoom in a bit more if you want to see more or certain types of uh, ways of seeing that. And then watch this, just insert this on the page. And then again, the whole idea of pinching and zooming, but I'm going to tell you one other idea and you might be wondering, wow, he's kind of going all over the place with this one. Now, what's the story? Maybe you're used to just kind of documents that go up and down. But the beautiful thing I like about OneNote is there's no specific limit because watch this. I could give you a little sneak peek of what's to come later. Look at that. So all of the goodness is here. It's a bit like kind of, I think like a beautiful mind kind of stuff. You've got this whole map of goodness going on. So you then as a teacher, by the way, can have this stuff queued up before you go into class. All good. And then you can decide just to kind of view this area and cover that for a few moments with your students and tease out some problems. Then you go and view here. So getting away from kind of maybe that fixed maybe presentation or teaching style if you want to. <clears throat> if not, cool as well, it doesn't matter. The other big thing I really like is this. I'm going to stick on the math theme as well. Right, <laughs> I'm going to give myself a tick for the inking. I'm going to give myself a tick for ruler. <clears throat> oh, awesome. Oh, ink to shape. You're going to love that and replay. So one of the big ones, math solver, I'm going to give a tick. Ink to math here for sure. And then I'm going to keep going on the math theme. I got some cool stuff for you here. I don't know if you've ever heard of Desmos graphing or GeoGebra or any of that good stuff, but you can insert these by simply just copying in the link and then you got this goodness going on. So watch. 
so much confidence I didn't even check this one, but yeah, Desmos graph. So right now you've got a live and I suppose living graph. So you can go y equals x plus two. And then they are intersecting with each other. So you got the points, you can um, dot them to kind of note them. You can zoom in a little bit. So it's like a living thing. <clears throat> the Desmos graph lives inside in one note, which is cool. And it's happy out to do so. The other thing here, I don't even know what this is. I think it just copied it in Tetrominos in GeoGebra. So look at this cool stuff. I have no idea. <laughs> I haven't messed around with this one. I just thought it was cool and I was like, oh, people might like to see that one. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. So you can do a lot. And I think the big thing about OneNote is it's not just like a static page. It's like a very living page. The other thing, could you imagine if you saw this really awesome, you know, video and you thought, oh, my students are going to love that video. Maybe I'm going to play that for like a minute or two and then we're going to go into some problems. So in addition to love and maths, the one thing I absolutely love is simultaneous equations. I just can't get enough of them. I love solving them. Quadratics as well, but simultaneous for sure. Love it. So you brought in a little YouTube resource. Good and welcome to the Tech Math channel. Equals. Hello. Give it a go. So hopefully you've you've so you pause the video and you're giving it a bit of a go and you're giving it a so what you could do here very easily, I suppose, is in any environment you could just play that video. And actually, here's a funny one. What's to stop you doing this? What's to stop you playing that video and then pausing it during parts and asking students for their feedback or again asking the students to try something or maybe anticipating or I'm going to tell you something funny here actually which is kind of cool. So how about you're doing your steps and I actually <laughs> didn't even have planned to do this one but let's say minus two. Uh, 2x plus 2y is 16. I definitely didn't plan to do this, but uh, it has kind of. I would get so ripped out of it in the chat if um, <laughs> if this didn't work. I haven't done now this stuff in a little while. It'd be so awkward, wouldn't it? Right. So we're looking at here. We're doing some math problems here. Uh, I don't even know. I wasn't paying too much attention, but watch this. Uh, and we'll, we'll know in a moment, 2x plus 2 times 1 is 16. 2x is equal to 14. x is 7. And then just because I need to know, yeah, it looks good on the top line. And minus 14 plus 6 is minus 8. Yeah, OK, it works. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, you're loving the OneNote's ability to do it. Yeah, someone in the chat, um, AKS, has shown that um, they love seeing OneNote's ability to do this. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. I still love seeing students' ability to do this, but with the OneNote ability then to see different problems and permutations and all that good stuff. But why I'm showing this now, you might say, would he stop showing maths? I'm showing this for one reason. Could you imagine if you as a teacher had, um, you know, obviously in the shared version of this, you've got your lessons, you're writing, you're talking. <clears throat> Actually, you're connected with your students just like this, maybe. Yeah. And then how about the student that goes home and they're like, oh, now, first of all, my layout, I'm definitely going to critique. I wasn't being overly um, careful with my layout. But if they say, mm, I don't really know how the teacher got to here. I don't really know how he got here. What's the story? So watch this replay. Get ready for some mind blowing action here. If the student presses replay or if you, the teacher, presses replay during the lesson, could you imagine what's about to happen? I don't know about you, but I'm loving this. What do you think about that one? <clears throat> In the chat, what do you think about that? Does that sound good? Does that look good? The other big thing I love is this kind of show and reveal. So that gives you a really nice ability. The student can definitely follow. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, thank you, Becca. Lots of goodness. Um, yeah, I know it's amazing. Uh, and I think it's a big one. For me, the inking and the replay was just a no brainer. Oh, it was so good. Um, probably I'll jump in a second to something else. It's not specifically one note, but this replay is like a free kind of a little video-esque type feature that students can just play back. I'll tell you one thing. I've had notebooks for years. They were old as you like, right? Multi, multi years old. And before the replay function even came out, then when it came out, I was able to go back to a notebook a couple of years ago, press view and replay, and I could see how I was teaching the content, the way I laid out the problems. And to be honest with you, it was pretty cool because I saw past me, so past Steve, two, three, four years ago or whatever, the ways I used to do the problems, all of that good stuff. Yeah, Maria, oh, please use it. It's lovely. 
And I learned so much about, I suppose, my technique, my instruction. And then, you know, if I saw parts of my instruction where students were getting a bit confused, maybe I did kind of addition of fractions in a different way that no one liked, only me. Maybe I'd change my practice. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely, David. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, time travel. Yeah, oh, it was, it was so cool when I saw that. I was just like, wow, that's madness. OK, so we got the replay function. And you know what? The replay function, by the way, is not just, watch this. It is not just for like this stuff. Could you imagine if you're doing some kind of cool stuff there? Maybe you're drawing a planet. I don't know what a planet looks like. Maybe it's Saturn and there's the rings. Maybe you are doing some stuff with rulers. I don't know what you'd be doing. But no matter what you'd be doing, look at this. Now in the specific order that they came in, you can have replay of shapes and all that goodness. Carry, does it include audio? It doesn't carry, but I'm going to tell you what does include audio right now. So how about you did that there for your students? And this jumps me onto one of my points, but that's absolutely OK, because I don't really have a set order to do things. I'm going to draw your attention to the insert tab right now. Look at this audio. Well, how about this audio, student? Do you love uh, simultaneous equations as much as I do? Well, I love them. 2x minus 2x, yeah, that's no x's. Dash, blank, whatever you want to call it. 2y's plus 6y's, all of the y's, 8y's. So given instruction like that's cool. Maybe you're asking for some feedback. And the other thing to really note, by the way, I'm recording up here. I can press stop at any moment. But students can give audio uh, feedback and responses as well in their notebooks. And when you jump into that amazing world of the shared notebook, oh, the magic just happens. But watch this. All of my talking, and I think big thing when you're using Teams is to hit share and then includes desktop audio. I'm going to see if I did, if I pressed it. Well, how about this audio, student? Uh, do you love uh, simultaneous equations as much as I do? Well, I love writing up here. I can press stop at any moment. Is that not just the coolest thing? Who likes the audio uh, insert feature in OneNote? Jump into that chat there. I'm uh, ducking my head down left. I'm looking at some goodness here. I like that one. That was a good, very nice prompt. Yeah, love that one. Insert audio. Yeah, Kathy, bang on. Yeah, I love the audio. And again, the key thing, you as the teacher can uh, insert the audio. But more importantly, the students can do that as well. And that's sweet, to be honest. Could you imagine? Like, I'm going to tell you this one. I'll say, can you imagine? But then I'll tell you. Like, you see how here I've done a simultaneous equation and then I have given, let's say, as I write it, watch this one. So imagine I go for insert audio here. And I say, hi, everyone. I'm just going to insert a bit of audio here while I write this problem. I'm going to go x plus 2 is 5. And then I'm just going to go simply x is equal to 5 take away 2. And then x is equal to 3. So I think students, the key thing to note is just to watch out for here what you do when you're, you know, bringing that five or make sure you really just make sure about the, the minus and your signs and stuff. And then very simply, you can just go back to recording and press stop. But watch this. You've given instructor. Sure. Let's say hi, everyone. I'm just going to insert a bit and the students see it there. I think it's a knockout. Yeah. Oh, Dawn, for sure. Students with special or additional needs. I've got something for you in a moment. And you know what? I'm going to jump on to that in just a second as well, actually. So amazing stuff, the inking, the audio, the, all the good stuff. And by the way, so, 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 so simple. Uh, we had here, I've actually brought in something because uh, I always end up queuing these, but uh, I'll show you a good one now. Watch this. Um, yeah. Ba -ba -ba. I got some polar bears coming up in a second, actually, but it's so simple for you to insert a video. Watch this. You can just go. And I'll zoom in. It's all about that insert tab a lot of the time. Insert online video. Right now, if you press view supported video, you're going to see now actually, you know what? That's so good. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, you know, it's actually good to click this. I rarely do click it. Uh, a lot of these tools I don't use at all, but I know that they're cool and people love them. OneNote supports embedding content from the following. Now, watch this. Bunsi click view. <laughs> Google it. I never use that one. Crazy, daily motion, etc. Look at all that goodness here. Big ones that I go to for sure. I love putting in some streams. Uh, Microsoft Forms is cool. Flipgrid. Oh, would you stop? <laughs> Big shout out to Flipgrid as well. It's amazing. Maria, not to my knowledge is the answer to that. No, I do think that this is one of those sort of unique things. Uh, you know, um, I think one note is unique unless I'm, <laughs> unless shown otherwise. But I, I, I and I, I search always. I'm always on the lookout. But no, I think one note is such a unique tool. Um, yeah, I think it's awesome. Uh, YouTube stuff I love putting in as well. Like if you were to put in 
We chew some polar bears. Okay, that sounds good. Mother, mother polar bear coming from the den. Press pause. Copy that link. All good. And watch this. Paste it in here. All good. Or if you wanted to get lazy and just paste it in, you can do that as well. So then you got your you got your video on the mother polar bears and the cubs emerging from the den. Such a random video. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> but then you could actually take some notes with your class. Her cubs you could have them gaze them. out at their bright new world for the very first time. They make some funny noises. That's for sure. I can tell you that much. Uh, oh yeah, big shout out to Flipgrid. You know it. Uh, flip video from stream. Yeah, back and now you're talking. So. One of the other things I really like is just super good is when you're in stream here, right? Uh, now, what stream? I'm saying like when you're in the stream, she would, some people mightn't even know what stream is. I think of stream like an internal kind of a really friendly, uh, built for purpose video repository, a bit like a sort of an internal school based YouTube. That's the way I think of it. That's my kind of jazz. And when you go into stream, it's so super easy to press the upload video button. Watch this. Couldn't be easier. You can drag files in or here or browse to upload all that goodness. No hassle at all. Easy. Now, I wasn't even going to show it, but now I'm showing it. Do you remember earlier when someone said to me, hey, kind of like I kind of like what you're doing with that audio stuff. That's pretty good. That's probably going to be useful, right? I used to show this with PowerPoint recorder, so I used to go and let me see and I make a new slide. I used to very, and I probably still do, if I go insert in PowerPoint and screen recording, right? Take a look at this craziness. Insert screen recording. I'm going to select the area here. So insert screen recording, select area, audio and pointer on and press record. Watch this. This is me uh, as a teacher. Uh, writing a problem. Hi everyone, this is uh, today's problem. So we're going to do x plus 3 is 10. So nice and easy one, I think. So x is equal to 10, take away 3. Key thing is a little journey has happened. Changing your sign or whatever other way you want to think of that, uh, you know, x is 7. Okay, everyone, I'll see you in class tomorrow. I'll see you online tomorrow, all that good stuff. So hover up or press, I think it's Control, Shift and Q, Windows, Shift, Q, all that good stuff. It tells you at the start. I sometimes remember, I sometimes don't. And then you end up with this. Look at this. This is me uh, as a teacher uh, writing a problem. Hi, everyone. This is uh, today's problem. So we're going to do x plus 3 is 10. So nice and easy one, I think. So x is equal to 10 take away 3. Key thing is, tell me in the chat if you think that that's a good feature, by the way. Just, just ping that chat. Do you think the ability to record your instruction is going to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner? I think Becca and Lacey are in there saying, yeah, it's absolutely going to be a winner. I think so. This would have been like, to be honest with you, this is and was one of my primary instruction methods, be it for CPD for teachers, or if I was preparing some content for my students. Let's say we're doing a lesson on uh, linear equations and some students just don't quite get a specific thing. I could very easily then, yeah, translate's coming as well. Uh, I could very easily then um, create some content for them that they can view on demand, which is super easy. And watch what you can do as a teacher. You can just go right click save media and you can save that to your desktop, no hassle and call it a uh, teaching uh, video lesson uh, not two or something, whatever you want to call it. And it's on your desktop as an MP4. But that was the way I was doing it, right? And then something really, really, really cool came around because my workflow would have been to go to stream. OK, watch this. I would have gone to stream. I would have uploaded that video browse to the desktop, watch all this good stuff and brought it in here. Look at this. So browse and upload it. OK, not bad. Pretty good. I love it. All that good stuff. And then I can share it. I can copy it. I can uh, provision to groups and I can bring that into my uh, OneNote or loads of different places. But since uh, a little while ago and maybe it's yet to come in yours, but I'm not sure. See this create button. This is the stuff of magic. So this combines, I suppose, the best of PowerPoint as well. To be honest, I'm probably still going to use PowerPoint anyway to record these because I just like it a lot. Some people also love to record their slides. It's not something I've ever done so much, but some people are mad about it. So if you press slideshow and record slideshow, you get some goodness as well that way. I don't really do that, but that's not to say you don't have to do it. But if I was to press create, look at this mad stuff. Upload live event group channel, but the new uh, show in town is record screen. 
allow, all that good stuff. 15 minute time limit, that's A-OK -okay for me. Choosing cameras, all that good stuff. Press go. My recording device isn't available, can press go, that's OK. Long story short, you press record, you do exactly the same thing as I did. And when your recording device is available, well, actually, it doesn't really matter. I can probably, you know. Stephen, have you can I ask a question? Hello. So does it do the picture in picture with your camera? Because I've tried doing it. It seems to because it's got the webcam. But then when I look at the recording, I don't see myself. Is there a trick on that? No, well, would you believe I haven't? I think I've only ever pressed this once, so I've never seen it to finish. But right. it's only just, yeah, it's only just yeah. from me. Yeah, I want to play with it more. I, I'll tell you that afterwards as well. I do see the PMP coming in the bottom right though when I do click it. Uh, so <laughs> I'm thinking, will I'll tell you another good one? I'll tell you another good one, Alice. What I really do love is this, and it was funny. Uh, you mentioned the screen recording Flipgrid. I know I'm not uh, talking about Flipgrid today. But if you type into the interwebs, screen recording, Flipgrid screen recording, it's going to be have something there or whatever the thing I'm not, maybe the tool to it. But Flipgrid have got an amazing screen recorder right now. Uh, maybe not Flipgrid, Flipgrid even. Yeah, the Flipgrid oh, screen recording is really easy to use too. So it's yeah, just and you get that beautiful PM picture in picture as well. It's super nice. It's, it's really intuitive. Yeah, it's super, super lovely. And that's before, <laughs> Flipgrid's super lovely. And that's before you even talk about the Flipgrid team. They're even more lovely, <laughs> so that's for sure. So the you can record in stream. You can even jump on over to Flipgrid and do the screen recording in there. By the way, you know what? It's not often I think about these, but please go to flipgrid.com and see what all the fuss is about because it's pretty good. It's pretty cool. Lots of cool stuff there. Uh, game changer for students and teachers and just the way you do stuff. So I think it's lovely. Oh yeah, Becca, very enthusiastic support team at Flipgrid. You know it. They are the best and they got. Yeah, look, oh, look at this. Yeah, nice one. Anne. So <clears throat> I would say get on Flipgrid. Stream is there for you as well. Remember at the start of this uh, sort of presentation, I said that even if you don't know how to do these things, I'm going to give you resources later. So I'm just here lighting some candles or fires or whatever you want to think of it, sparking a bit of interest. And I'm, yeah, Anne is here. I'm going to spark a bit of interest and then you can follow along at a time and a pace that suits you. So all good. So. Where was I even? Let's keep myself honest here in the ticks. This is good. I'm having a good time. I'll be honest with you. I could do this session another time. Wouldn't even be the same. So I did my replay for sure. <clears throat> yeah, I could go for a bit of ink to shape action. So I'm going to tick that ink to shape button and then I'm going to attempt to draw a triangle. Well, you know what? I nailed it. <laughs> and how about this? Boom. Will I be so daring to go for three for three? Yeah, did it. So ink to shape is pretty cool. Love it. Uh, ink to text is pretty nice. So watch this. Um, so hello, and highlight it, press ink to text. Boom, we got it. Another one that I kind of like, to be honest with you, um, I think it's important too. For me, I guess, remember I said fun was important. I guess the other thing that's important, important really is uh, fun, well-being, kind of being empowered as well is very important. So stickers, I think, are a big part of this. So could you imagine that you're looking at a student's work right now? They got some great stuff going on and maybe maybe that student is trying their level best they're trying so hard and you know say oh, you know what i'm going to give them a little bump right now a little bit of more motivation and a boost maybe i could leave them an audio message maybe i could leave them a cool video about a, a panda a polar bear or whatever but you know what maybe i could just give them one of these amazing stickers inside in one note bringing on the action here from the fruit crew one of these guys or maybe i decide it's going to be the the pen oh these are lovely too as well the fruit salad editable sticker pack so good point so you could say uh, awesome or oh, wonderful uh, awesome sarah or john or whoever or whatever and boom look at that lovely personalized sticker in your students copy wherever in your colleagues copy whatever it is your colleague staff notebook or whatever look at these oh, these are cool as well periodic pals awesome can anyone tell me here what do you think in the chat of the sticker function? I think it's awesome, good. And there's a tick on stickers. Uh, graphing, I did. Oh, dictation. Haven't even haven't even shown you dictation, to be honest with you. I just think this is uh, changing the game for everyone. So watch this. Dictation is up. So here we go. Right, this is definitely becoming kind of some beautiful mind stuff. By the way, uh, as I said, BTW, look what I can do when I zoom right out. I can just make that a whole lot tidier. And that's okay because that's one note and that's the stuff you can do. So I'm going to do some dictation action right now. 
maybe that Desmos graph doesn't need to be as crazy big, and that's okay too. Desmos, we'll see in a minute. Yeah, lovely. So, dictation. How easy is it to do? Well, it's pretty easy. You just press the home tab and you press dictate. So watch this. Some people may not be the best typers. Some people may want to express themselves in different ways and may not be able to. But right now, I feel very confident that I can type really fast without the use of my hands, which I think is pretty cool. What do you think about that dictate function? In the chat, I think it's pretty cool. I'll be honest with you. I think that's a winner as well. Uh, there's, there's a lot of winners here right now. So I'm going to give a little tick on the dictation. We did the insert audio. Yeah, I love that. How does it do with accents? I don't know, Becca. I have an Irish accent, I think. It's doing pretty good for me. I think it does pretty good for accents, for sure. Yeah, another win winner, I think, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you know what I always say? Have a bit of fun with it. Try it out for yourself. And you know what? Maybe you get a bit crazy. Watch this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to put on an accent. No, try and put on an accent and have fun someday with that. Maybe some Wild West accents. Insert pictures. Is it hard? No. Insert pictures uh, from the file, so your computer, from your camera. Now, insert picture from the camera is pretty awesome. If you wanted to take a snapshot of something just around your house or a snapshot of some science experiment or some experiment or something for class, you say, you know, yeah, you know what you say to yourself? I don't want to just go and try and download that and upload that and do all of that madness. Just bring it straight in with the camera or online. Now, what am I going to put in? Uh, I think it's going to be cute cats. That's what I just thought about right there. And you know what? We've got this kind of cat hanging around lately. Pretty cool cat and it's a friendly cat it looks a bit like that so that's really nice too you can bring in online pictures really easy as well and just flesh out you know your um page here insert video i showed you okay researcher what's this all about well if you were doing some research or if you were teaching a class on a specific topic see this button here that's in the insert tab researcher let's see what that's all about all right uh what do we want to research uh, what am I interested in right now? Uh, space, maybe? Space or the future or something like that. So maybe outer space. So what can I do? I can hit three dots here, uh, report an inappropriate topic, sure, or I can press plus, add to the page. How cool is that? So you got your little bit on space here. You can adjust the spacing. <laughs> that wasn't planned, but I, I'll take it. Uh, you can adjust the spacing as you want. So very nice kind of research. You've got books. You can search all books, websites, whatever you like, more topics, all of that good stuff. It wouldn't be something I use every day, but I do want to show you because it could be something you use every day. So there you go, researcher. I think pretty cool. Uh, you've got stuff like forms as well. If you've never heard of Microsoft Forms, it's pretty awesome. Very easy way to do kind of quick assessments of whatever type you want, uh, quick ones, long ones, whatever. Well, how does it work? Press the button. Now, do I have an amazing form in here uh, oh i have a maths quiz you know what we did we didn't do enough maths today so i'm gonna press insert we did not do enough maths so look at the goodness here now uh, we've got a math problem here uh, we can solve it all that good stuff here uh, it's easy uh, we can i'm just gonna press random stuff now because I, I, <laughs> i'm not solving these this quickly but i think i got pro well probably one out of three i'm gonna press submit I'm going to press view results. I'd say one out of three. I'd be very lucky to get two. I did get two. Oh, wow. Okay. Lucky guess on the second one, and I didn't get the third one. So can you imagine how easy it is to just have a quick assessment in your OneNote, in Teams, in wherever? Look at that. I love it. Now, what can a student do? Go back to the thank you page. If the teacher has the um, form set up for multiple responses, and you know I usually do, submit another response. Go again. Try and improve, improve, improve. So I think it's cool. So forms, super duper stuff. Uh, researcher, I think forms might have even been a bonus one. I don't know. Yeah, forms here. The one thing as well that I didn't show you, I suppose, is this. Watch. Um, how about if a student likes to type some math? Maybe they want to. So maybe they put in x plus 2 is 8. They highlight it, and then they go to the draw tab, and they press maths. And then they want to solve for x. Easy. They want to get the steps. Easy. But watch this. Now, I'm not sure if I'm signed in. So if this falls down, do not, do not uh, hate me. Generate a practice quiz. So a student is working on a problem that you set or they set. 
But here's the trick. What can students do? They can actually generate their own quiz and unlock their ability to be, to be self-directed learners. Could you imagine? Don't fall down on me. No, nope, didn't. OK, and I hadn't even queued up. How easy is that? So you can queue up these as many as you like, but then when you show your students these tools, you can unlock their potential <clears throat> to do these themselves. So I think that's super good. Uh, they can keep generating quizzes as much as they like and learn as much as they like. Now, the key thing as well that you would have known is, or you would have seen, Immersive Reader is littered all over these tools and all over these features. I showed you the PowerPoint and the Stream Recorder. <clears throat> wow, OK. Uh, immersive Reader. I like to sometimes hold, I don't know if I'm going to say the best for last, but you know what, maybe, to be honest with you. It's absolutely awesome. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to copy some text here, OK? Now, I don't have to. I can just spoiler, go straight to view Immersive Reader. But you know what? I like to give Immersive Reader a special place, special space to just be shown off because it deserves it. How about you had something there about outer space as a teacher? By the way, you can just click up there and type in stuff. Now, how about that? How about you got students with additional educational needs? Oh, God, yeah, the chat's got flying here. I thought there was no chat in there. Lovely. <laughs> Yeah, uh, all the colors, that's now we're talking, Kathy. And actually, because I've seen Kathy and all the colors uh, talk here, you can just go crazy here and you can set up as many as you like. It's all about user preference. So, and aside from going crazy, you can actually just put in a yellow background if it helps students that have additional educational needs. Maybe they have dyslexia and you want to help them. So maybe that yellow background, the contrasting colors with the black text, maybe that's going to help them or different colors. And you can talk to your learners about that, whatever suits them. You can have rule lines. <clears throat> I'm kind of quite partial to that one, whereas you might imagine as a maths teacher, I'd be partial to that one, but eh, whichever. You can create rule lines or not, and then, okay, let's get to it. I can't wait anymore. View Immersive Reader. Right, this is going to be a Tarantino where all the stuff is turned. Oh, it isn't beautiful. Usually the stuff is turned on, I turn it off, and then I show you. So what is Immersive Reader? Well, if you can imagine that you're a student that has dyslexia, this is probably a lot of, uh, you know, visual crowding. It's probably difficult to discern the letters. It's tough to see the words. It's tough. It's not easy. So if you press view immersive reader or if the student presses it, then they can very simply have it played back to them. How about this? Outer space or simply space is the expanse that exists beyond the Earth and between celestial bodies. So we got playback. We got different voice selection speeds, etc. Now this is where the magic happens. Students can make the text size larger or smaller. They can increase the spacing or not. They can change it to Comic Sans if they want. Now, I myself did a little bit looking into it. Comic Sans, I think, is a font that suits students who are early learners of English or making the letters and stuff like that. So Comic Sans is A-OK, -okay. it's really good. And then I particularly find myself, and then I ask students about it too, that the yellow with the black background is probably one of my go-tos, but the other students can choose and they can all choose individually, whatever works for them. More colors as well. And then if you want grammar options, so this is where it gets really, really good. Syllables, nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. That's cool. That's very good for, I think, teachers. Let's say you're a math teacher. You're not an English teacher, but you have to support a student with literacy and not numeracy. Well, then for you, I think it gives you great confidence and it empowers you to support the learners because you know straight away, look, I know that bodies is a noun. I know that uh, containing is a verb because it tells me and I, and I trust it. <laughs> Reading preferences, line focus. I heard an amazing story about a student that had a concussion and the line focus was the thing that helped that student get back in the game, learn and, you know, in a nice way. Picture dictionary, wait for this. Now, what are we going to get one for? I don't know. Oh, fields, okay. Uh, hydrogen. Not everything gets a picture, but some things do and it's pretty cool. By the way, spoiler, I have a language on. Magnetycznych. You have support for other languages. So I pick here Polish. I can go support by word. But look at all this. Look at all of that stuff. All those languages. I can go by document. I can choose, let's say, if I wanted maybe a bit of French, because I do like French. French by document. And I can play it out. Vide dur contenant une faible densité de particules. Principalement un plasma d'hydrogène. Et... I think it's going to be posted on YouTube, Maria. So that'll be pretty awesome. So view immersive reader, simple. And when it's all queued up, all the features are there. Awesome. The other one I wanted to show you as well was Translate. I think someone had asked about Translate as well. And I'm, not, I'm aware that it's 54. So I think as a teacher, you're always going to be looking at that clock. Did I queue up something nice? I think I did. Or I thought it was nice anyway. So watch this. Um... <laughs> 
I'm actually, do you know what? I'm going to try, well, will I wow you? I don't know. Uh, I know a little bit of French. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the accents and stuff right, but je parle un peu français. And I didn't, I just don't want to find the thing, but right, je parle un peu français, a bit of French here. And then if you go into the view and translate, let's see what it makes of this. I don't know. I would be surprised. Got it. Oh, I love it. Look at this. So I speak a little French. Well, thank you very much. So I just said I'd type a little bit of that. So you can go and insert a, a translation of that. As well, you've got the ability to check the accessibility of your page. So it'll tell you if there's all text missing or uh, descriptions or warnings or too much this, that and the other. And across your notebook, that's super good. Uh, authors, uh, loads of other stuff. Right. I think for the most part I've shown probably most of my favorite features, maybe not all of them for sure, but we're on to this part of the, I suppose, session where I have, <clears throat> hey, some resources, right? And, and maybe a bit about the community. So uh, one of the big ones I want to do or just draw upon, <clears throat> I'll go down here first, is I'm going to show you here. I think we were in polar bears sometimes. Who knows where we are? Right. Zoom right out. Yeah. Without a doubt, absolutely one of the go to resources right now. Uh, it was called the community at the time. I want to draw your attention to the Microsoft Educator Center. It is an amazing resource. You can just uh, search for it there. And then what do you do or how does it work? Well, if you press sign in and you sign in with your account. And once you're signed in here, <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. And Lacey, you're going to be loving this and everyone else who asked about the training. This is just guided training. It's awesome. So imagine if you go explore courses, right? And you say, you know what? I want to learn more about that OneNote. It seemed OK. So you can go into the getting started with OneNote, independent learning, OneNote introduction, all of this good stuff. Look at all the OneNotes you could ever want, all the OneNote training you could ever want. Yeah, perfect. Enjoy your class, Kevin. Have a great day, a wonderful day even. So if you press getting started with OneNote, resume the course. Now, before we resume the course, though, We've got a description, a duration, a date. You get a badge, you get some points, you get recognition, which is the big thing for me. You've got some learning objectives. You've got all of this good stuff. And then let's just jump in. What does it look like? Well, it's module based, which I think is absolutely cool. And this one in particular is so good. It's actually kind of guided. Welcome to this OneNote guide for teachers getting started with. Next, click or tap navigation panes and then select show all. Now, how good is this? Remember I showed you the map paint there? Look how good is this? You couldn't get any better than that. Show all, look at that. Let's take a look at a notebook that's... So you've got a course that's guided and at the end you've got a quiz, right? 80% pass here, 10 questions, and you get that badge and all that goodness. So if you took one thing from today, get on that educator center. It is amazing. Get on Flipgrid as well. It's amazing. And there's a... Do you know what? When it comes to help and stuff, you want to see all the good Flipgrid learning and knowledge here. Yeah, there's Kathy just put in the recordings and the chat suite. Love it. Uh, not finished yet, though. Wait for this. So we got more goodness. So I got other resources. So uh, I'm going to give you a whistle stop tour. First of all, there are any amount of great resources, but here are some of the big ones for me. There are any amount of Teams for Education webinars and or OneNote. And you can click them and they're just available here. And I'll send links later or put them in the chat there. Maybe you'll see them after. You've got great events, great uh, webinars that you can join. Q have got some amazing stuff, obviously, as well. No brainer. You've got some great resources there. You've got some great courses. So just like the ones Transform Learning with Teams or the OneNote ones. Now, I suppose special shout out then as well. Courses on the Mac. Uh, Mike Tolson. Absolutely. Amazing. I'll be showing the brand new There's Mike. nine. Per Mike Tolson on YouTube. Amazing, amazing person. So helpful. Just created a YouTube channel recently. 2.53 K uh, subscribers. Amazing resources across all the tools. One no teams, etc. All that goodness. So get on that. Uh, Alice Keeler is absolutely dominating as well. Being super, so helpful with these amazing little, I think kind of bite-sized nuggety CPD videos. Love them and I love pointing people to them. So Alice Keeler on YouTube, get involved, definitely. Look at all these lovely things. Like if you'd wondered, oh, how can I change the avatar icon or how can I start a class? And these are just very good because they're just so short and simple. How do I get a code? How do I do an assignment? How do I do, that's what you got, the how do I do answered. Um, the Wakelet collection, by the way, big shout out to Wakelet. There's a Wakelet collection that is just so comprehensive, it's not even funny. It's Teams for Edu, but if you go Wakelet and you go Mike Tolson again, 
he's just really awesome. You've got great stuff about remote teaching and learning. You've got quick tip videos, stuff about PowerPoint. This one here, by the way, you came here for the OneNote goodness. Become a OneNote ninja with this PD collection. Come on, who doesn't want that? You've got all the resources and all the goodness and we'll send links out. And then to kind of wrap it up a bit, I want you as well to look at the following. I want you to get in on Twitter if you're not already in on Twitter. And I'm going to wrap very soon because I look at the time and probably there's a ping there. Follow Microsoft EDU, uh, follow myself as well for sure. And then I'm retweeting all of the people. I'm creating content, collecting content, curating all of the words all the time. There's any amount of resources out there that's really going to help you. Look at all these amazing webinars, uh, all of the stuff that you want to learn. Q.org is where it's at right now as well. So Q.org, obviously you were there because uh, you came here. Um, but just to give a shout out and then I will try to just be quiet then. I talk a lot. I'm a chatty Irish person. That's what I do. So q.org forward slash Microsoft. Get involved. Look at all these amazing rock stars. I call them like edu rock stars. Join a session. You got to join a session and then you got the different dates, different times. What sessions would I recommend? All of them. <laughs> and obviously if time doesn't allow and you can't clone yourself, you know, be more selective, but just get involved in all of these ones because I think no more than this is the most helpful community ever. Like we've got, you know, Kathy in here. We got Alice in here. We got any amount of the amazing people from Ireland as well on my kind of social networks and my my friends as well, my edu friends. So they're always very eager to help each other and share and do all of that good stuff. So I'd say, and I had some handles to follow. Follow um, Flipgrid for sure on Twitter. Definitely follow Flipgrid. So uh, follow Twi Flipgrid, follow Microsoft EDU. So Flipgrid, uh, get in there and follow them. Follow Microsoft EDU, follow Alice, follow Kathy. I see her in chat, follow everyone. I didn't want to keep mentioning specifics because I leave people out, but um, look, I had a great time. I hope you had. Follow me if you want as well, all good. I always love people coming on board. Uh, I'm gonna stop talking now and stop sharing the screen and I'm open to looking at some chat. I know it's kind of gone over time, but uh, I was excited, I had to. Had to go over time, had to get it all in. So if anyone wants to come off mute and say hi, goodbye, say something that they thought was cool maybe, what was the biggest thing right there for you? Come off chat and tell me what you thought the, like, the biggest game changer was from what you saw. What are you going to use maybe, you know what, as well, type in chat or come on uh, voice chat as well and just say what feature are you going to use right now having seen this video? What's the big thing for you that says, oh, it's OneNote and I'm going to use it tomorrow or next week? What are you thinking? And I'm going to look at chat as well. Yeah, don't replay in media inserting, I love it. Uh, and I'll call it a few things, lovely. Um, Ah, good stuff, Don. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, one on the iPad, absolutely beautiful, lovely. Plays beautifully. You got the pencil if you have it as well, and then if you're on the surface, you got the surface with the pen. Looks class. I <laughs> love it and love playing to learn and push all the buttons. You've got it. Screen record and stream winner replay. Yeah, um, audio recording is brilliant. Yeah, good night. Good night, uh, two we. Um, yeah, hopefully you had a good time. Look, that was my big objective to not make it, you know, too prescribed bit of fun uh, and the competition was there. I had all my uh, people sort of, um, I suppose, encouraging me in the chat. So I was like, got to make this super good, super fun. <laughs> exactly, Anne, like a brain zing inside your head for sure. Yeah, you can add slides to one note for sure, Nicole. You absolutely can. The one probably thing, and it just you if you go to insert, you'll see options to put in file or print out, and then just practice and try try both methods and see what you like more. Maybe you like the printout and you want to ink on top of it in the OneNote, or maybe you just want to bring in the file. And that's cool too. Thank you, everyone. That's really nice. And you know what I'll do? I'll stay until the last person is gone. How's that sound? And if ever if anyone is talking on mute and I can't hear you, that's that's all I can do. <laughs> Kathy, what's going on? This was great. Oh, good. How are we doing? Are we on our own? No. Yeah. No. Oh, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Stephen, I'm going to stick Everybody's around because I've got to show off what the gorgeous party. weather is like over here in Jersey. The real Jersey, Kathy. Jesus, the weather is unreal, isn't it? <laughs> 
You are. are you at you're... the beach, Adam? <laughs> no, I'm in my back garden. 